Hello world, Kara St. Louis here. Thomas Sheridan will be along shortly, um, but while we're waiting for him, I just want to tell you why we're coming to you to talk to you again tonight. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I am going to be joined in just a few minutes by the one and only Thomas Sheridan, and that's because he's a very special guest on an upcoming journey to Sardinia and Corsica called Sacred Fay, the Lost Beings. We decided to spend some time on both islands for a few good reasons. One, the island may be, these, both of these islands are practically touching each other, but in some important ways, I think they're very different. We'll have to ask Thomas what he thinks when he gets here. Sardinia is very much a feminine island, and Corsica is very much a masculine island. So they're a pair in that way, and I think they should be explored like that. I'm not sure anyone's doing that yet, so let's give that a shot. On the 26th of May, we'll be meeting on Sardinia and staying for a week. On the 2nd of June, we're just going to hop on the ferry to Corsica and stay another week. I'll be doing an eye magician lecture on Sardinia. And I've asked Thomas to do a lecture on Corsica pertaining to his book on sorcery. I think he said yes, but I'm going to ask him again. It seems really quite fitting for that island, which is still very much under psychic lockdown in my intuition. And it really needs to be cracked open. So, what entities will be waiting for us there? As Sheridan says, they are always there to sort of do a dance for strangers, uh, find out what you're made of, show off a little bit. The primary civilizations we want to explore are the earliest known so far, and that would be the culture of giants. So much has been uncovered recently, despite the best efforts of the government, working on behalf of the Vatican, to keep a lid on the whole thing. After the giants were taken into the earth, and some say many were put into stasis and are still there, ready to rise at the right time, there was the great neurogic culture. And as always, the thieves of Rome moved in like vultures to steal what they could and destroy the rest out of time and space altogether. So the giants of Sardinia were brilliant astronomers, leaving observatories all over the island. Some say they were mercenaries hired to defend Egyptian pharaohs. Some say these giants were called the Shardana. Some say they were the Raphaim of Canaan. Those giants' tales are drenched in sorcery and necromancy. They were rumored to be sons of the Watchers. You cannot separate Sardinia from giants. Their history is filled with this. Some researchers make the assumption that the giants in Sardinia must be those discussed in the Bible. I don't make that assumption at all. I think 99% of what can be known about giants, we must learn from outside suspect texts like the Bible, and it has yet to be learned. My personal journey is all about tracing the diaspora, the spreading out all over the globe of the descendants of the Fae from Ireland, and that's part of that for me. There is evidence of the cult of the bull, which could just as well have been the age of Taurus astronomically, which I think is important to dating things, but we'll research that when we get there. Certainly it indicates a Mithraic culture there, and the Mithraic initiation is still practiced, by the way. It's still alive and well. The Naraji, who came after the giants, were also astronomers and healers and seafarers, and they left over 6,000 sites on Sardinia alone. Thousands and thousands of towers strongly suggest that this was a mighty empire. If not an empire, then certainly part of the very advanced global civilization we know existed until just a few hundred years ago. Right now, over the next seven years with Uranus and Taurus, it's a perfect time to dig into these islands and find out what's really going on. So Sardinia is the feminine island, welcoming and yielding her bounty. Then we'll jump on to the male island of Corsica, which is secretive and defensive, and whose capital city is actually a fortress. This island is covered with dolmens and meniers, and there is also the legacy of the sorcerer Napoleon to unravel. This is the island of his birth. If there's time, adjunct to that, we really ought to trace the story of Caspar Hauser, also known as the child of Europe, as in fact he was directly of Napoleon's line. All his siblings were slaughtered, yet they let Casper go free. They just hid him in a basement room, away from anything and everyone, for his entire childhood. And that's worse than slaughtering him. Killing him may have come at too great a psychic price, I suppose. 
but to prevent one's incarnation from unfolding in this way is an esoteric crime of the highest order. So yes, we will be visiting archaeological museums, but we're also going to do a lot of field work. We'll take a day off in Sardinia and one in Corsica to eat and drink and be merry and just sort of revel in the bounty of the local cultures. Remember, one of these islands is Italian and one is French. I expect them to be quite different one from the other. So let's just wait for Thomas to arrive and we'll see what he has to say about all of this. And frankly, I can't wait. It's another one of those journeys where Thomas is really the only man for the job. It's going to be epic. All right, so I'll come back when Thomas comes, yeah? All right. Hi, everybody. As I promised, here's Thomas to join us and to give us his absolutely unique take on everything. And I just can't wait to hear about it. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Cara. Good to talk to you again. Yeah. So Sardinia and Corsica. I explained to the people already that my view, which is just my view, is that this is a feminine and masculine set and that I don't think it's been investigated as such yet and you and I haven't really we kind of scratched the surface on that but we didn't really get into that in depth and you may not even agree with me actually I do and yeah? I'll tell you why I was in Sardinia a couple of years ago making a film with, and uh, I went there I'd never been there before I had a super well I wouldn't say a superficial I did study up on the neuragic civilization and the the previous civilization to that the so-called giants or whatever yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and I did not expect my mind to be blown like it was I did uh, if there's one place on earth that lives up to the hype yeah it's yeah it's absolutely Sardinia and I'll tell you why. I've never been on a place on earth that has an inconceivable amount of ancient structures that have real, I mean, when I say mystery, I'm not just talking about the, the dimensions, the shape, the purpose. When you're in them, there's something you can, it's like, you know, when you go into places where they say, oh, you could feel or not a house. I can feel the soul of the people who lived there before. Right. Well, that whole right. island is, is saturated in that. It's a remarkable place. It's a, it, I'm amazed that how little has been done on it. So thus far, now that's going to change. And that's like one of the reasons to like get, if you're serious about reading the energy of megaliths and understanding other, the, the more, shall we say, esoteric or, or consciousness engagement with megaliths and, and sacred sites, now is the time to do it. And I'll tell you why the it's it this is going to change people are going to figure out that sardinia is actually the europe uh, the egypt of europe it really is it mm -hmm. really is once you get in egypt okay you won't get it it's not as good as in sardinia but my god it, by european standards it's bloody close enough it yeah. was yeah. i yeah. mean some of those neuragic uh, towers if you see what they look like when they were initially completed they are like nothing else in the time period in Europe at that period. Right. That, and it's very mysterious people, the Neuragics who, the Neuragi civilization who arose there. Mm -hmm. Very, very mysterious. Uh, we're light years ahead of anyone. I feel a lot of the same vibe that I, you get with like Petra in Jordan. Like there was yeah. almost like a proto civilization that existed before the Greeks and the Romans by thousands of years who are right. equally, if not more advanced, and somehow that was co-opted by later groups. Now, new, it, the feminine thing, right? The feminine thing, right? Yeah. yeah. The place is full of wells that, have to, that are remarkable. There now, you wherever you have a land of wells or sacred wells, you have goddess worship because obviously it is the, it is the, 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 the internal productive parts of a woman expressed mm -hmm. in... Uh, in stone and whatever in the, and water in the air. So like in Ireland, Ireland is full of them. Ireland is named after yeah, goddesses. Yeah, All yeah, the rivers yeah. are named after goddesses. So that's right. culture is very deep here. So instantly I recognized it just like that. Absolutely bingo. Now, the thing too as well was that there are wells there that have to be seen to be believed. The engineering is ast it's astounding. And there are other ones that are more crude, but they're no less impressive. Now, you know, I'm a you know me. I'm a big believer in the folklore. Is the 
is is the lexicon of the truth. Yes. It's a cipher. Yes. And, you absolutely. know, and and folklore there talks about these places in very distinct ways. There's two aspects, and they're both kind of like diametric as well. One is giants, and the other is little people or fairies. Now, they call the all over the, the island are these things called uh, Domus de Janus. Mm-hmm. They're carved into by the previous pre Naragic civilization, and they were continued by the Naragi civilization as well. Mm-hmm. And they're complex tunnel systems, and you can enter into most of them, into rock outcroppings mostly, into the ground, that are remarkable engineering, astounding, astounding engineering. And uh, the local folklore is their homes of fairies. That's what they call them, fairies. Uh, and even the local, you know, the local touristy brochure says things like, you know, it's not only Ireland that's the land of ancient sites and fairies. We have that in Syria, Sardinia too. So it's right. very interesting that they've tapped into that. And it is interesting, yeah. Yeah, and when you go to these places, there's illustrations on the walls and stuff like that. Rock art carvings of these little figures who are staring right at you, and they're like absolutely peering into your soul, and it's almost comical that they're giggling at you. There's nothing <laughs> like this in Europe. There's nothing like this anywhere in Europe. Right. That's a degree. And then right. on the other side, you have the giants, the giants that were built in the Raji Towers and so on. Right. And yes, you, you talk to anyone there. Uh, they're very approachable, the locals, and they'll tell you, there was giants. My dad found huge bones in fields. Now, let's let's not be so literal that the giants were twenty or thirty foot tall, Jack in the Beanstalk image of a giant. We could be talking about people who are seven or eight feet tall, mm-hmm. and that actually would make a lot of sense because there are some of those structures would require strong, tall people. Right. And to everyone else in the world in, in Europe at that time, would have been around four foot nine. That's a giant to you. Yeah, and there's other right. ways. The, the, the word giant can also mean a giant intellect, a giant culture, a giant persona. Now, what's happening now, unfortunately, in Sardinia is that ancient alien show went there and they did beautiful footage, just the best footage I've ever seen at the island. Unfortunately, that narrative is thrown on there. And for better or worse, I, some of the people involved in the actual ancient alien things were actually people who do good work. But unfortunately, the, edit, the editorial production team will always spin that a certain way, you know yourself. And yes. so yes. you know, they're all alien launch pads and all this nonsense. And uh, so unfortunately, that's going to draw in that kind of element yeah. in, their, in their tens of tens of thousands. And so the, the time to visit places like Sardinia and Corsica is now. Absolutely. I agree with you completely. I agree with you completely. So you know what? Can I just take two minutes and ask you some things? Because, of course, the things that, the, the things that you've been saying have triggered some questions for me that have to do with what you know and have to do with my own research. So let's talk about the fact that um, you said it's a go- you, there, there's always a goddess culture there. Thomas, I haven't found any. And, and of course, obviously, the world is a goddess culture. The earth is a goddess culture. Right. I haven't seen anything that hasn't been Catholicized yet. Have you? No, because it's a, it's a base. Look, it's basic common sense. It's a no brainer. The earth is a is a woman, and uh, the the sky is the man. The mm-hmm. the man gives uh, gives down its shaft of lights, its rain, its uh, its nutrients to create life on the earth. The woman right. is a receptacle. This right. is why the, it's this is why this developed everywhere. It wasn't like anything. Uh, mind-blowingly incredible it's just the obvious thing uh, the earliest people well a man do, you know a man provides his thing to a woman and life as babies are born the same with the animals with our livestock and the animals in the wild therefore the planet is the same it's just a normal uh, logical extrapolation in terms of archetypes and allegory it comes it's 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 not anything particularly outstanding or revel- uh, an amazingly revelation. It's equal to. Now, the problem is, then, is it, I read a fantastic book years ago. I can't remember the gentleman's name because it was a long Flemish name. But he was basically a follower of, and one of the first followers of, of, of Carl Jung. And yeah. he mentioned yeah. something that, and it was a, it's always stuck with me, that Greek civilization went into decline when they removed the gods and goddesses from the landscape and put them in the sky. So ah. therefore, it's automatically a transfer into a, a uniquely male viewpoint of 
creation and you know uh, cosmic uh, facts and happenstances yeah. and so on. Yeah, yeah. It, that's what ha- and that that's and Greek civilization went into, and this is why the later the 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 the, the Roman and the Greek pagans they developed things like uh, sort of like reserves. It's a very interesting idea. It's something that really needs to be talked about and think about in the future. Areas where there were sanctuaries for goddesses to or to live, like the goddess Athena. There was parts of Greece and and Italy and France that were like Sintra in 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 Portugal was named that by the Romans because Sintra comes from Cynthia, which is another name for Athena, mm-hmm. and it was a reserve. It, the goddess, these these places, these ideas of the the goddess being given a sanctuary on. In a in a in a certain place, powerful, intense, amazing stuff. Yeah, uh, something we could do well to actually emulate in the modern world. Right, and it's something I've been thinking more and more a lot about lately. This idea of like uh, things like planting a forest as a sort of a like a sanctuary for Athena or Cynthia or whatever, whatever the archetype you the female archetype is. Right. And, uh, I think there's an, an a, I think places like Sardinia and places like that where there's a, still a, ba- a basic thing on that the idea of these these things are ancient and they're they're, they're connected to water and underground aquifers and stuff like that right. leads very very much to this big time. Now at the same time, Sardinia has a third culture. It's bulls. It's a it's yes. A oh, that was so I was going to bring that to you. Yeah. Let me. Okay. Can I? Thing. Can I ask you? Can I ask you to consider what I was gonna? Because uh, uh, there are several parts to it. Okay? okay. First of all, the fact that it's got a bull culture is it's fascinating for me, um, because it's myth. Well, it's lots of things, isn't it? It's Mithraic. And when you were talking about the energy of the island that just never ceases buzzing, the Mithraic initiation, alive and well, alive and well. So maybe Sardinia is still buzzing in its entirety to a Mithraic initiation and you've got all these sacred wells and you've got all this underground stuff, you know? Labyrinths. So there's that, number one. Number two, I always end up thinking, because of the times that we're living in right now, I think of, can we can we then date it? Can we then try to date this, some of this civilization to perhaps the age of Taurus, you know, in the, in the precession of the equinoxes, that particular age, is that possible? You hit the nail right on the head. Yeah. In the Rajic temples, uh, there's a certain kind of a cairn. It's very similar in style design to the court cairns or the long barrows in England that are definitely a bull's head. That's exactly what they are. They're, and they're pointed towards certain astrological alignments. Right. They're shaped like a bull's head on the land. But when you go to these books, that I have some here, on the neuragic culture and they show the, the, the sort of diagrammatic line drawings they reverse it upside down so it doesn't look like a bull if you flip yeah. it around it's a bull now yeah, yeah. The bull is the first god of the indo-european people it's everywhere you have, like mm-hmm. you said you have the mitras you have the sacred cow in india of the vedic mm-hmm. cultures mm-hmm. in ireland you have the red and black bull of kuri very mm-hmm. central the irish mythological text of the uh, of the time is completely about bulls you got you've got it everywhere you've got the spain the iberian veneration of bulls and mm-hmm. still continues thing things like bullfighting you right. have like the sacred cow the whole thing our we were so connected to this thing and yet sardinia is at the last place in europe along right. with iberia but there's also you see the celts tended to venerate the swine the pig where right. the, that was a later development, but ultimately, but still, the bull was still very central. I mean, oh, yeah. uh, uh, Serunos, the Heron the Hunter, they're often portrayed as as uh, as as goats or as uh, deer, but the reality is they come from the horn god comes from the earliest bull veneration. Well, and, threat, you name and it. You, and we have Boan. Let's not forget Boan, the river goddess who is bovine, in yeah. in essence, yes. That's what it was named after the bow goddess. It was the was the, the cow goddess of Ireland. Right. And uh, she was dissected by the she was the, dissected by the Dagda and her body parts created the land. Yeah. So these are I mean they're everywhere, these stories. Yeah, and right now, on a lesser level, on a lesser level, but but maybe just as important in terms of timing, we've got Taurus and Uranus for the next seven years. 
which is a big deal. It's a big deal. So now perhaps is fertile ground to have a look at this particular bull seed culture, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, they, these things, well, a, 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 as a matter of fact, if you look at certain constellations, their design leaves you with no doubt of what they are. You can extrapolate any, any specific name onto add, but there's two that really stand out is Leo the lion. It's clearly yeah. a lion. And, yeah. you know, and, and what you call it, uh, Taurus, it's clearly a bull. Yeah. It's a clearly a bull. It's just like right. Orion could be easily made into a man. You can right. see that shape there. Now, it's, obviously, uh, it's definitely, you know, anamorphic, uh, where there's definitely the zoomorphic look to Taurus. Oh, that's definitely a bull. And that would have shown these, although that kind of, uh, you know, astrology that we, the zodiac of the day is rooted in kind of Babylonian things, it went back before that. It's just mm-hmm. a date for the first to write it down that it was followed by copied by the Romans and the, um, the Greeks and the Hebrews and so on. Right. But before that, it existed. Right, before right. That. So the other thing that you were talking about was the inevitable, <laughs> the inevitable presence of the fairy in every, you know, ancient culture. And I was saying that I don't believe for one minute that what we're talking about when we talk about giants in Sardinia is proof of the diaspora from the land of Canaan. I don't believe that. But I'm still I'm trying I'm still trying to follow the trail, as many of us are, of the diaspora, if you want to call it that. I don't think it was a, a diaspora has a negative connotation, and I don't think that's what I really mean. But I mean the going out from Ireland. I go I, the going out from Ireland of the descendants of the Fae. This you know every time any time you find this kind of thing, I think that you found a piece of it. People are still looking the wrong direction, Thomas. They're looking the wrong direction. They're not, they need to continue to look to the West, to look to Ireland, to look or whatever we call it. Before that, even if, the, if there was an Atlantis or what, you know, Doggerland and this side, where, where, where is Atlantis really? The whole Western European seaboard. Yeah, you know, exactly. And, and this, the, when the ocean rised and that you had that, that earthquake off Norway, it yeah. sunk so much of the land. And that's where the stories of High Brazil and Tiernan and all that come from. Right. There were the ancestors under the sea, but uh, regarding the fairy kind of idea, yeah, and coming out of Ireland, you might be onto something. In fact, I think you are. In this particular part of Ireland, Sligo, there was a group of fairies that lived in the mountains, and I'll be talking about this when we get to Austria in a couple okay. of weeks. Okay, great. They called the gentry. The gentry existed. They were they they until about the 1900s, and they all left. And the local folklore is they went to live in cities in around Europe. They went to live in Budapest. They went to live in Vienna. They went to live in Paris. They went to live in Dublin. They became attracted to city life. Now, I find that very, very interesting because yeah. that's not usually what you hear. You always associate these things with the countryside, with the, the woods and stuff like that. But right. that's, a, you know, that's so specific, that, that story. It's too good to be true. It's too good to be made up. Yeah. It's too specific. Yeah. Right, just, and they lived inside the mountain. Now we'll be, we've, we had this in the previous discussion regarding the Austria and the Utenberg and mm-hmm. all that stuff. That's for another discussion. But let me tell you, they're all linked. They're all linked. There's no, you don't, I, I don't see anything anymore in microcosm. You know, like when I was down in Portugal, I saw Ireland, I saw England, I saw Germany, I saw experiences and archetypes and feelings I've had everywhere. Yes, you have a unique local regionalized overlay. But and when you go into dive into them, what you discover is that they're all fully connected. Yeah. There's there's there, you know, there's a reason why the stone circles in, in, in Ever in Portugal look like the ones in Ireland. There's a reason why you get the same sensations in places like Central Portugal that you get in the Odenthal in Germany. Yes. There's reasons yeah. because there is there's parts of our consciousness that are directly connected to experiences that relate to our ancestors in terms of connection with other entities. That's yeah. that's the kindest way I can put it. I yeah. don't like, it's, it's so easy to get, like you said with the Bible, it's so easy to get wrapped up in terminology. And then you're on a path and you're sucked down that path. Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to always go with your vision. or You know, like, don't be a, a unidirectional microphone. Be a omnidirectional microphone when, when approaching these, all these ideas. And bringing them in, in totality. Then yeah. you develop in yourself a personal model. Yep. of these experiences and then you can express them yep. always be open to new information and always change unfortunately there's too there's too many people trying to uh, start 
religions on the back of this stuff or, yeah. or, or cultures. The reality is you cannot be locked into one thing. And there are places like Sardinia and a few others where you jump into them and you suddenly have a new level of understanding. And right, so exactly. This is why traveling, to the, you know, it's, you know, un unless you're disabled or you're really poor and you can't get there, I totally get that. That's why it's beautiful. We have things like YouTube and people like us making videos. But if you can't, if you, you, get, if you have to go there, it's like an art gallery. You can look yeah. at all the pictures of all the Monet paintings in the books forever. It's yeah. not to be standing in front of this thing and seeing the bush yeah. strokes in front of you that you realize what it actually is. Exactly. Exactly. It has. It's. They don't. They bear no resemblance to the real thing, right? No. 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 You just. It, it's. A, it's. It's. It's an emotion. It's not a necessarily only a five sense experience. So what about Corsica? Because I feel like my sense of Corsica, again, this is the masculine island. The, 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 the capital city is a freaking fortress. This is where Napoleon, you know, jumped into the emperor stream of Europe, the uh, conquering stream of Europe. Yeah. And yeah. yet these islands are right up against each other. And yet I feel they're very different. Completely different. It's so bizarre. I yes. mean, they're much closer than Britain and Ireland, and yet there's much more crossover there. Yeah. And yet these two, so that shows me there's a reason for this. There's yes. an absolute reason for this. Yeah. And it's not uh, necessarily based on culture or anything. It's to do with the land, the land itself. And uh, in Corsica, if you look at the, even the megalithic culture there, as impressive as it is, it's very different. Yeah. And again, yeah. I notice this is another thing I know. You want to talk about the male and female thing. When male, and I'm not saying males are better than females or females are better than males. It's not like that. It's, they're all it's the same thing at the end of the day. You know, yeah. like if, if you don't, you know, spend time studying Vedic uh, philosophy, you realize it's all, it's just the same thing. And it's, it's, but, but they are comparative because they generate the forces that great universe and cosmos, whatever. Then the, 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 the the, their megaliths are masculine because they went through the trouble of carrying faces on them. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. if you have a more, if you have a more, should I say, feminine aspect, it tends to be more abstract in art, more right-brained, more uh, loose. Yeah. Uh, where the male mind, which is a good thing because it's needed too, is more precise. So therefore, you could definitely see from the earliest point on, there was a trajectory towards uh, realism in their earliest depictions of art right therefore you're driven by a more technically minded less artistic less uh less right brained vibe it's scleroticized um, right it's it's hardened it's scleroticized it's frozen yeah. in a way it's yeah, almost it's frozen in a way. Attempt to make to make sculpture uh, it, it's right? possible, and that's admirable by the way but yeah. it, it's a different trajectory it's a different effect just shows yeah. me that the, look, I'm a firm believer in the landscape draws the people it needs. I'm a firm right. believer in that. And you don't arrive in a place because you want it to be, you're, you're brought there. Yeah, and I think, I think Corsica remains to be cracked open. Mm -hmm. I think Corsica's beg Corsica is begging to be cracked open. It's my my sense was, and you just tell me what you think, my sense was that it is surrounded by a, a spell of protection, a spell of repulsion almost to repel um nosy people like us i suppose or nosy people like anybody for me it feels very um dark you know but you're gonna you, need, you know i you need the dark you need the dark you need the dark you I, do to me to me it reeks of freemasonry it, oh, it just yeah. reeks of it and okay. uh and that does you know it does it reeks to me if like when we all know the the level that masonic orders had with the french military massive yeah, absolutely. yeah. i mean i mean all freemasonry today is basically generated out of the grand orient in paris anyway it seems to me that they, you know it's an enclave for masonic type ideas i think that it's probably you're probably going to it's probably that element is what gives that that thing there's a closed shop kind of vibe about it yeah these are not to be cracked open by the way that's what they are they're not yeah. to be seen in any other way as they are mysteries now we all know like we all know like with the templar look how much that look how much the templar thing opened up the esoteric understanding in the west since the 1990s late 1980s there was almost nothing on that stuff right. now we know so much about that we didn't know about before 
Right. Yeah, I get the impression it's the same there. I, I, it's this, it's like when people went down to south of France, Ren Le Chateau and all that stuff. That that was a nut that was cracked open for the same in the same way. Corsica is an is a is a virgin territory in that sense. It is. There's, you know, and uh, no doubt in twenty years' time there will be books and videos that will be talking about it in more depth. But right now, that that's behind the veil. Yeah, the, we, the gotta, veil, the we just got to get in there and see what's going on in there and see what our impressions are yep. and have a look around. You have so much experience in arcane symbology. I mean, you're going to see stuff that people would miss, you know, and I, and I can't wait to hear what you have to say, actually. So, so actually, then the fact that one, one island is Italian and one island is French but I not mean, purely Italian and not purely French. That's what's yeah. interesting too. They're 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 that's 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 you know I love these little kind of twists in culture because yeah. often they tell them amazingly enormous stories. You know, it's these little sort of like it came out. Those I don't. I'm not a big fan of these DNA these DNA theories because no. a lot of them change every few years. But one thing that came out this week is that they that they discovered that the Irish had come by way of Sardinia. Now that's a new one. That's a new uh, one. There you go. I mean, this well, is what we were well, just the other way around. You know, we don't know. You know what I mean? It, again, they, they, they all make this assumption of the east-west migration, as if yeah, you yeah, and you are capable of going to the east or the north or the south. It's 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 it, we're we're, de uh, that, uh, we're dealing with that's a lot yeah. of that comes out of Jesuit orders, the yeah. the eastern gate, and all this kind of idea that everything ar it, it arises in the east. And that's, I mean, this is just classic reversal, isn't it? This yeah. is classic reversal of everything that's actually true. And it's amazing. Oh. It's amazing how much you have to push back just to get this idea that things came from the West considered, you know, but it's a constant battle. It's a constant, constant battle with that. So even people who've researched and are awake are still spellbound by it. But uh -huh. still people I talk who know this stuff, it's going to come, well, it all comes out of the Middle East. And I'm saying, hold on a second, dude, where did you really pick that up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> or, interestingly enough, because the, uh, the um, entrancement is so subtle and, and finessed so well, and that's covering us, you can have a conversation with somebody and they, you guys agree, you agree, oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. And then suddenly, boom, the rubber Covered band snaps twice. right back. The rubber yeah. band snaps right back, and there comes. So I'm, I'm clever because two people agree with me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I want to, to, to. I'm going to ask Thomas to do more than one of these because we. Uh, I will tell you why we're doing this so early because we got people registering for this before we even announced it, which means it's 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 necessary, it's wanted, and people are pretty excited about it. So. I asked Thomas to do this right now, even though we're not going till the 26th of May. And I'll probably, you know, I like talking to him because he's one of those people that just sparks your, it's, you know, you go places because you have this, you know, you do your own research and you're at a certain place and then he, and then people who are doing their own research genuinely, they'll say something and you go zoom, zoom, zoom. Your, your, this course is so important. That, so, yeah, that you're that much further along. Yeah. And that's really important. So I'm going to ask him to do a few of these. Um, if you want to go with us, you know you can always reach Thomas, and you know you can always reach me. So do that if you no, like. No, whenever you have, an, whenever you have a, uh, a clarification or an insight, let, come on here and let's discuss it. Absolutely. Because, uh, this is good. I mean, I mean uh, the things you brought up are basically we're on the same page in, in yeah, 90% of it. I think and, so too. Uh, yeah. You, when you mentioned that about the that the, the sinister thing of Cor Corsica, and I was like, "Yeah, that's a vibe I got as well." Yeah. But look, you know, let's go. Let's turn it back to the the, the, the bull in the in the labyrinth. Yeah. The, the, in order to attain wisdom, the bull will not leave the labyrinth. You have to go in to slay it. That's you right. Know? And this is this is this is you know these kinds of things and these kinds of knowledge or wisdom journeys. They should yeah. never only be about confronting the light. In fact, right. that's not, that's actually quite very unhealthy. I mean, I, I've had a bad experience in Sardinia. I know better now. I got my ass whooped by trespassing on a place energetically, and it was pretty bad where really? I should not have. And uh, I learned a lesson, and now uh, we, we will we'll not be going to this place. We will not be going there. It's no. extremely remote up in the mountains, but. Uh, uh, basically, there was still cults operating up there, doing bull veneration and sacrifice. 
and uh, I, we can talk about it another time. It's, but right. it's an extremely difficult and dangerous experience. Right. Well, you know, one of the things the we need to do. Fruit the basket. Yeah. One of the things we need to do soon, and we will, is deconstruct uh, 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 the Untersberg when we're when we're back. We need to get on and, and deconstruct that after we have a, a week or two to sit with it and sleep and on it. And that's more virgin ter 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 territory because there's almost really? no information on that in English. Absolutely. Just, that's the known. thing. None. Zero. The only, I mean, yeah. So, okay. So there we go. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you so much. And thank you for agreeing to come and be the special guest on this because, you know, there's just, as I, as I always say, there are always a couple of places where it's like, you know, we got to get Sheridan for this. We got to get Sheridan for this. So he's been very, very kind about offering what little time he has to come on these trips. And I'm, I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. I'm delighted. And another thing too, a reason that I'm looking forward to is people have to understand uh, uh, these are very beautiful places to visit. Not, you're not just got uh, the, the, uh, everything, like the, the food, the hospitality. It's like old world Italian. Yeah. It's like a troll, it's like a, a troll back in time. You will, you'll go to these restaurants and the mama will come out and make the pasta for you. It's really like that. It's Very really good. Like that. Okay, that's definitely yeah. on the top of my list for sure. <laughs> okay, Thomas, I'm going to go let you have your night. And um, this will be up shortly, gang. So contact us if you want to hear more about it. There, uh, People already are. It's crazy and great. It's important, All right. yeah. All right, see you later, Thomas.